and welcome to my kitchen. This week's relatable recipe is chicken fried rice. And this is a super simple recipe. My husband and oldest son love it. So I figured that would be a good one. It actually is really good leftover too. So it's even better. So I use a large container of chicken tenderloin just from your grocery store. This actually is 1.8 pounds. Anytime, anywhere between one and a half and two pounds is fine. It's not gonna make a huge difference either way. So here shortly we will trim these and then I'm gonna cut them up into bite-sized pieces before we throw them into this large kind of Dutch oven type of dish. It, this is um, kind of like a stoneware, cast iron mix and I really, really love this. This is what I would suggest or a wok. If you have a wok, that's much better. I don't have one, this is what we're gonna be using today. And we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom of that when we fry up our chicken or actually saute our chicken. So we're just gonna stir those a couple minutes on each side, those bite-sized pieces before we do anything else. But before we do that, I wanna go ahead and give you a rundown of what all we're gonna be using. We're also gonna have some soy sauce, obviously, some sesame seeds, three whole eggs. I'm gonna do about a fourth of an onion, a few baby carrots, a few bites of celery, and then I had some frozen broccoli in our freezer. Um, and basically the vegetables are kinda of your own. You don't have to use these vegetables. I would suggest using some onion Maybe not as much if you don't like a huge onion flavor. But other than that, you can kind of do what you want with the vegetables. It's your own personal choice. We really like the broccoli and the uh, carrots and onions. The celery I do if I have it, I don't, I don't. But you definitely also want to incorporate garlic. So I would do about two large garlic cloves. I had a few that were small, so I'm actually going to do a little handful here. And then you're just going to use your basic white rice. If you use brown rice, I don't think it's going to matter again. But it, the traditional way is the white rice. So we're going to be doing that. So to start off, I'm going to trim all my chicken and then I'm going to get into the pan to start sauteing. And I'm also going to go ahead and cook my rice. You want to cook your rice before you mix everything together. So I would suggest about four cups of rice for a family of four to six. Okay, so what I've done is I've got my rice, four cups of white rice cooked and just with a lid on it over here to keep it warm. I've got all of my chicken cut into bite-sized pieces and they're in this large stock pot or Dutch oven which are, or wok, whatever you're using with a little bit of olive oil to keep them from sticking. And I'm just using a metal pair of tongs. So you can see they're about yay big, just kind of whatever you want. But you're just gonna cook them, I don't know, I'm gonna guess 10 to 12 minutes total. You can kind of flip them around until they're cooked through. But then you're going to take them right back out and put on a plate and then you're going to toss in your vegetables. So I'm going to grab a plate to put these on. It's also good at this point to season between each step. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of salt. I'm just going to, I'm not going to measure it, just a sprinkle and a little bit of black pepper as well. And just continue to cook that until it's cooked through. Okay, so I've got all my chicken cooked and everything looks good to go. You could bump it up to a higher temperature. I've got it on medium. If you wanted it to be more charred or, wet or grilled looking, I didn't really do all that. So 
But when you go take this out, first you're going to bump your heat down to low. You're just going to pick them up with tongs. You're not going to dump this whole thing because you want to keep the oil and the juices of the chicken in your pan, in your Dutch oven. So I'm just going to take these out. Because they're going to go back in here towards the end to reheat for a couple of minutes. So you don't have to worry about trying to keep it warm, the chicken, it will get reheated later, but you just want to make sure it's cooked through. Which definitely helps that it's broken up into bite-sized pieces. It makes this portion go by much faster. And as a, um, a way to, you know, even do this even easier, you could, I've never tried this, you could buy the frozen pre-grilled chicken chicken tenders and just cut them up and that way you're not even having to cook it, you just have to heat it through. Never tried it, but as long as you got it with plain, without any kind of seasoning on it, I think it would work. All right, so we've got this ready. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the olive oil. And if you have sesame oil, you could also do that since we're gonna be adding some sesame seeds to it later as well. I just prefer olive oil and a little bit of sesame seeds, but you could do either one. So once you've got your oil in there and your heat down to low, you're gonna dump in all those fresh vegetables. I've got my garlic mixed in through here, throughout my fresh vegetables, so I really have to pay attention that garlic doesn't burn. If you're worried about that, you could add your fresh vegetables and then add your garlic a few minutes later. But you basically want two cups of chopped vegetables, frozen or fresh, totally your call, but you want about two cups worth. Okay. And you're just gonna kind of stir those around with the olive oil. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper again. Like I said, I like to season between each stage of the meal. So a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt. And this is gonna cook for maybe, I would say five minutes. You just have to soften it. Now, if you were doing, um, I don't know, like bigger chunks of vegetables that needed more time to soften, you may have to go a little bit more. That's why you wanna make sure on those carrots, you chop them up pretty small because carrots are fairly coarse vegetables and you want those to really soften up. So I'm gonna say about five minutes. Now that they're all in there, I'm gonna bump it back up to medium low heat and let those stir fry for a little bit. Also while this is working, I've got three whole eggs in here. I'm gonna go ahead and beat those in a bowl with a fork. You're gonna add these in about five minutes. So basically when the vegetables are done. So you wanna make sure you don't add milk. It's not like you're making scrambled eggs. You're just breaking up those yolks and beating them into the whites. This is kind of what binds everything in the chicken fried rice. There we go. All right, and now we just kind of stir these around until they're done. Okay, so now in this pan, I have all of my vegetables pushed to one side. I put just like maybe a teaspoon more of olive oil on the side that doesn't have the vegetables. And I'm gonna pour my eggs, which is gonna sound crazy, but onto the side that doesn't have the vegetables. And I take the same wooden spoon I was using to stir the vegetables, and I'm just gonna stir the eggs. What you wanna do is you want to cook them about halfway. So if, like if you were making scrambled eggs, about halfway to that point because then you're gonna to toss in the rest of your chicken and your vegetables into this egg mixture. You're gonna throw in your sesame seeds and you're gonna throw in your rice and mix it all together. So I would say, depending on the heat of your pan, a couple of minutes before you wanna start stirring in the other ingredients. Okay, so now it's starting to cook on the one side, so I'm gonna go ahead and toss in my vegetables with my eggs. I turn down my heat, turn down my heat to low, throw in the sesame seeds, which are going to be about, about a teaspoon of sesame seeds. You can just kind of measure those out in your hand. Sprinkle those in. You just stir that egg mixture around. Coat all the vegetables. I'm going to toss my chicken back. Now, if you had a really big pot, you could just dump the chicken and rice in all at the same time. I kind of like to do it separate so it doesn't go spilling out. All 
right, now I'm going to add all that white rice. I'm going to turn my heat off. It's getting a little too hot. And then just fold it in. Okay, so once you've got your rice and your chicken and your sesame seeds in, then you're going to put your soy sauce. And the recipe I originally started using called for about four tablespoons. When we made this the first time, it really wasn't enough. We ended up each adding a little bit more soy sauce to our plate um, as we ate it. So I don't really, I just say sprinkle it over the top to kind of coat it and see it soak in. That's probably more like five tablespoons. And then you can still have it at the table if someone wants extra. And you're, again, you're just going to toss that around. I'm going to turn my heat back on low and let this simmer or just kind of heat through just for a couple of minutes. I'm actually going to go ahead and pop a lid on that too. All right, see you in a couple of minutes. Okay, so I let it heat back through for a couple of minutes. I've got my big stock pot full, and as you can see, this makes quite a bit. So we're a family of four. We always have leftovers when we make this. If you're a family of six, you may not, but I feel like it's a really great portion. And I usually just a couple of spoonfuls per person. And again, put a little bit of soy sauce on the table. They can add to it if they want, a little extra salt on top, and it is perfect. I hope you enjoy this super easy recipe, and I'll see you next time.